y'all, this is Amanda with She's a Mad Gardener, and today I'm actually at my parents' house. Um, they live not far from me. They recently moved here from Virginia, and so they are actually out of town visiting right now, and so I thought that I would fill their garden with some fresh spring blooms, and um, I thought that that would be kind of fun. They've got some guests showing up in a couple of weeks, so I wanted to keep everything nice and cleaned up for them, so let me show you what I found. Quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and also make sure you hit that little notification bell so you know when my latest videos are uploaded. All right, y'all, I got a wide variety. I have a lot of petunias. This particular variety is called Crazy Tunia Passion Punch. Um, I ended up getting some white petunias as well. I thought those were beautiful. Um, I got a couple of different sedums. My mom is a huge fan of succulents, so I thought that would be good. This is sedum lemon balm. I actually have this in my garden as well. All of these plants I picked up from Farmersville location, Farmersville, Texas, um, homegrown. I also picked up this Proven Winners guy, which is a um, Primo Black Pearl Hookera. And this is a perennial. Um, I actually think I'm gonna be putting this in a container, but I really thought my mom would dig these vibes. She likes um, a lot of greenery and a lot of unique textures. Um, I don't know if she likes floral as much as I like floral, but I did do a lot of cool textures for her. Also picked up this gorgeous butterfly bush. Look at that, beautiful color. Um, this guy right here is Bungleweed Burgundy Glow, and it's an Ajuga, um, but I look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, super psyched about that one. I picked up a couple of varieties of um, herbs. They are not gonna go in the ground, they are gonna go in pots. This is an orange mint. Um, it's a perennial, I thought my mom might enjoy pulling from there. Picked up some Dusty Millers. I already have some of those in her landscape. There's a couple more of those Crazy Tunias. Another Dusty Miller. This is actually just a pot that we're gonna be redoing up there. I, this is another, this is an oregano. And look, first of all, look at that leaf structure. Isn't that fabulous? But look at this. It's called Hot and Spicy Oregano. Hot, spicy aroma and flavor adds zest to a variety of foods fresh or dried. Thought that's pretty cool. Um, also grab a heated up Gallardia, which will be a bright punch of yellow. A couple of more varieties of petunias. I grabbed a flat of the Thumbelina um, zinnias. Here's a few more petunias. Looks like this guy fell down here. Let me get over here. So, y'all, check out that plant. Isn't that wonderful? So this is called a Cypress alterfolius. Not familiar with that at all. Totally bought this on a complete whim. I thought that this would be really cool in one of these planters. These planters are old copper kettles, um, antique copper kettles. So I'm going to rip all that out, put some of that in there for my parents. Also a couple more flats of flowers. And this is Mexican Heather. These are verbenas. They are lavender ver verbenas. They're just about to bloom. Lavender verbenas. Oh, actually, look, there's a pink one in there too. And then another flat of Thumbelina zinnias. So I stayed mainly in the cool range, pinks, purple tones, um, some limey greens. I do have one yellow, which I'm gonna use as a punch. Um, of color, some whites, but it should look really great. Look at all these over here. My parents had a windmill pine uh, palm, and they lost a lot of the leaves in the um, in the freeze. But they saved the leaves, and then I will bring them to the florist that I work with, and they'll utilize them for weddings. All right, let's get started, y'all. Okay, and now this is me getting back into the car to go back to my house because I realized I forgot um, some Felcos, some shears, so that I can trim back the daffodils. I wanted to show you guys what I do for daffodils um, when they're finished blooming. So let me do that, I'll be right back. 
Okay, here's their front garden. Um, they recently moved in, so um, a lot of this brick was here. Looks like some of it needs to be shifted back into place. Um, okay, so we had that big Texas freeze. These are actually Chinese fringe plants that um, all the ends were super brittle. So they did cut them back and you can see a little bit starting to come back. Actually, you can see it in a lot of different places. So um, that's very exciting that these are come back because these bushes are a beautiful burgundy tone, which looks fabulous. There's two of them, one there and one there with all of this green, the burgundy is fabulous in between. It looks really good. These are all spireas. Um, I don't know this particular variety, but this spirea blooms with bright pink flowers and there's three of them. So all this center will be bright pink, which is also why I chose the tones I did to complement this. Now over here is two old knockout roses. We cut them back hard already. I'm going to cut them back a little bit more. I am not going to pull or dig them out because their roots go underneath all of this and spread out and I don't want to disturb all this. So I'm just going to cut them off at the base. I'm going to put a little bit of brush and stump killer um, on just the ends of them um, to have those die back. The reason we pulled those out is because our particular area has red rosette disease, um, is very prominent in our area, and these were suffering from it, and it is a disease that has passed through the air to roses. I'll go ahead and put up a few pictures and a little bit of information so you know what red rosette disease is and if your plants have it. Okay, they also have the traditional tree ring. Um, I had put some daffodils for them in the fall. I planted all these in here and these have come up and they are done blooming. So I'm gonna trim those back and I'm gonna fill this whole area with color. My parents do not want to spend hours caring for their garden. They are avid DIYers inside their house. Um, and that's what they like to do. Gardening, not so much. So I definitely wanna give them a beautiful color that's really easy for them to maintain. All right, let's see what I can come up with. Of all the magic places in the world I've been to, this is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you.
Okay, we're all cleaned up here. So let me tell you what I do with daffodils. So once they're done blooming, I cut them back to about six inches um, of leaves still showing. And then I plant annuals among them so that the annuals grow up and kind of cover these and disguise these. Now, I know a lot of people braid their daffodil leaves or they'll leave them long and beautiful. These were not long and beautiful. They were damaged by our winter storm. So they're not something that was beautifully swaying in the wind or anything like that. I have used this technique for five years now on my daffodils and they always come back beautifully every year and multiply. So these are all trimmed back, ready to go. So I think in this area, so a couple of Dusty Millers died. So I think I'm gonna fill back in with Dusty Miller to create this ring that I had kind of going here. And then I'm gonna fill in with a ton of annuals right here in the front that'll spill over and fill in really well. Probably a whole flat of petunias would be my guess. Then I'm gonna do a couple of larger plants over here in the back. Okay, um, some larger perennials and annuals in the back to fill in this space until this guy comes back. Over here is where I cut back the knockout rose. So I'll be going in with my brush and stump killer and I'll be painting just the top of that and that will knock these back and kill them. In the meantime, I might put a, tuck a couple of perennials in here, but I'm really just gonna fill this out with the Thumbelina zinnias. The idea that those will last my parents till the fall, they will fill in and they will spill over the edge. I'll post a photo of some of my Thumbelina zinnias on here so you can take a look at what that looks like. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the tree over here. I'm gonna fill this entire thing with uh, Thumbelina um, zinnias so that it will fill over, mass over it, and my parents don't have to stress about it because it'll be good for spring, summer, and fall. Okay, I know this looks like a lot, but I do wanna have some instant impact for them. So I added in some more Dusty Millet to fill out this curve put in the crazy tunias, a little bit of sedum that I'm hoping spills out onto the sidewalk, tucked in a little bit of verbena there. I put some more of the white petunias a little bit backways. Here's your heated up galardia in yellow. Um, tucked in a little bit more verbena, some more petunias. Over here, this entire flat of zinnias will get spread out here. I'll put a couple of verbenas over here as well. And then this entire flat of zinnias will fill in this space. All right, you guys, I'm gonna be using plant tone, going into every single hole as I'm planting. And then once I'm done, I'll water everything in really, really well. the magic places in the world I've been to. This is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you.
Okay, here are the antique copper kettles that I'm gonna be filling in for them. I wanted to do a variety of textures, so texture was the main focus of these pots, and these are gonna go up on the porch. I think these were so much fun. I tried a lot of different varieties of plants, just some new stuff, because I know that my mom really appreciates different textures and unique designs. the magic places in the world I've been to. This is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you. Okay, here I am over by the 
knockout roses that are over here and I'm using a brush and stump killer to um, treat these. So basically I'm using a little brush, paintbrush that I can throw away. I will not repurpose this or reuse this and I just dab a little bit of the solution on the ends of the stumps and that's it. Try not to get it anywhere else because it is going to take out anything that it touches. So you just want to touch the top of the newly cut stump. Okay, I just blew off all the mulch, so everything looks nice and green, clean. <laughs> you can see I've popped a couple of the lemon ball sedums here. I've created kind of a ring arc with the Dusty Miller, um, popped in these um, crazy tunias uh, called Passion Punch. Got a little verbena tucked in there, a couple of more petunias, white petunias back there. This is heated up Gallardia, more verbena, a couple more petunias. Got this area filled in nicely with a couple of verbenas and then everything else is zinnias. These zinnias will cover all of this and fill out and fall over um, the edge of the planter, which will look fabulous. And then behind us, got the tree ring. It's also filled with all zinnias. It will fill in the entire thing by the beginning of the summer, which will be gorgeous. All right, and I put together these two planters utilizing um, a hook rod that um, they was already in these. This is a hot and spicy oregano. I've got some verbena tucked in, butterfly bush, a little bit of Mexican heather. This is an orange mint, an ajuga, um, some more verbena, Dusty Miller, another hook rod. And this is the, what is it? The ala furnace. I'll have to <laughs> look it up again. I think they turned out fabulous. My parents get a lot of wind that comes across here, so I made sure that the corner of the rug was tucked under there. And I think it looks awesome. Very pretty, kind of decorates the column without blocking their view. Okay, thank you so much for joining me on this project. It actually took three days. I just didn't have a lot of like a long length of time to work on at a time. So I had to take these little short chunks over three days to make sure it's all accomplished. But I'm very excited. I'm sure they're gonna love it when they see it um, when they get home. Um, other than that, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe bell, that, that subscribe button and the notification bell. So you're notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, she is a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.